Some people may not believe it, but there, there are love spells regarding efficacy. That's another story. I remember having a dream where I was in a, I was in a liquor store, and my attention was being drawn to this pink or this bottle of pink alcohol, and I knew the enemy was trying to get me to at least pick it up. And pink is a color that's oftentimes associated with, with love. I don't remember if I knew it in the dream or after waking up knowing that it was basically a love potion. And the enemy was trying to sway my heart towards a person who is not God's will for my life. The enemy was trying to put a quote unquote love spell on me. But you can't force someone to love you. Either the person loves you or the person does not. In the story of Jacob and Leah, no matter how many children Leah had for Jacob, no matter what she did, Jacob didn't love her. He loved Rachel instead. So again, Jacob didn't love Leah. He loved Rachel instead. Because sometimes a part of a quote unquote love spell is to engage in sexual activity where when two become one and not only physically but also spiritually like the Apostle Paul wrote about being joined to an harlot so this message is going to be love spell and it is meant to turn a person's heart a person's affection to an individual who most likely is not God's will for the person. And what it will also do, the intent is to blind the person to the individual God has called him or her to love. Stay tuned for more after this brief message. Welcome back. Um, now regarding this love spell business, be careful about attributing things to Satan that are not of him. Because sometimes a person is blinded to love. But a person is blinded to love because the Lord hasn't opened his or her eyes and heart to the individual he or she is called to love. So it's not always because a person is under a spell. It is written, an inheritance claimed too soon will not be blessed in the end. So there are certain things the Lord will withhold. But he has the ability to turn a person's heart. It is also written that the heart of a king is in the Lord's hand and he turns it whichever way he wills. So the Lord can open a person's heart and mind to see a person the way he does. And then feelings develop. Love. But there are times when a person is blinded to love because of witchcraft. A love spell. Because you can think about the story of Jacob and Leah. Imagine Rachel known for seven years that she was supposed to marry Jacob. Now we don't know all the details regarding the wedding where Rachel was. But imagine that she had been sent away for a day. And when she came back, she found out that Jacob was married. And maybe started thinking, 
I thought he loved me. And then knowing that the marriage had been consummated. And all these things, well, the parts that are written in the Bible, those things are facts. They did get married. The marriage was consummated. But also another fact is Jacob woke up the following day and he was disgruntled. He went to Laban and said, why did you deceive me? So it was deception that led to the marriage. And even today, there are people who have gotten married and they've gotten married effectively under a spell. And whether they wake up, woke up the following day or a little bit later, they woke up and they saw the person whom they married. They saw the person's true colors. Now I know some people are, are crying out, trying to get out of those relationships, or if it went that far, or trying to get out of marriage because they have woken up to the truth. Because with spells, eventually they will get broken. And a part of the thing about um, love spells, for example, in 2 Corinthians 4, verses 3 to 4, it is written, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded their minds, of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The Apostle Paul wrote that we should not be ignorant of the devil's devices, lest he get an advantage of us. The enemy blinded, or he has blinded, well, he has blinded people's minds so that they cannot receive the truth. They'll reject it. And I have a few scriptures to share regarding the enemy's activities to pervert a person's point of view. And in some cases, to even hate the person he or she is called to love. In Ezekiel 13, verses 17 through 23, the Lord said unto his prophet, Likewise, thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart, and prophesy against them, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Woe to the women that sow pillows to all armholes, and make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature to hunt souls. It is speaking about witchcraft, to hunt souls. Will ye hunt the souls of my people, and will ye save the souls alive that come unto you? And will ye pollute me among my people? And will ye pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread, to slay the souls that should not die, and to save the souls alive that should not live. By your lying to my people that hear your lies. One of the ways the enemy works is by telling lies. And again, like a spell, sorcery, pharmacia, usually involves the use of substances. There are some people, they have gotten drunk, they end up having sexual intercourse with someone, they woke up the following morning, they sobered up, and the person they saw next to them is someone they would have never slept with if they weren't drunk. So it kind of speaks about sorcery, pharmacia, using substance, where it may cause a person to look better than he or she is, a person to look more desirable. But even without the use of substances, one of the tricks of the enemy is to lie. And he'll point out certain things that are true and it'll have a twist or it's a lie that encaps or it's a true or truth that encapsulates a lie. In the Garden of Eden, Satan approached a woman and was like, did God really say? And when the woman tried refuting him, he came back with some stuff and said, you shall be as God knowing the difference between good and evil. And he was right. Because at the end of Genesis um, 3, the Lord did say, they have become like us, knowing the difference between good and evil. So the enemy will point out certain things, and even with that 
tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It seemed as if the woman wasn't even paying attention to it. It's like she knew she shouldn't have anything to do with it, so she wasn't paying attention to it. Until the devil starts speaking in her ears, start getting her attention to it. And likewise, the enemy can say negative things about the person God has called an individual to be with. And those things may be true, start pointing out flaws. And then the enemy starts pointing the individual towards someone else to make it seem as if that person is better, a better choice, a logical choice. That's also part of the spell. Lies. Believing the enemy's lies. But again, the spell will be broken because the truth always prevails. And this is about um, lying to the people, to pollute God. That's one of the ways the image tries to get others to serve another God. Continuing, Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I'm against your pillows. And these are devices for magic. I'm against your pillows, wherewith, there, wherewith ye there hunt the souls to make them fly. And I'll tear, mm, wherewith ye there hunt the souls to make them fly. Some people have had dreams, and in the dreams they were able to fly, but they were in control of it. And then other people or other times they had dreams where they were flying, but they were not in control. I'm not sure which one of the science fiction movie, it's probably all of them, where sometimes a spaceship had a tractor beam. And with the tractor beam, it could pull another ship, in a sense, into its orbit. But it was against its will. So the thing about making souls, hunt souls to make them fly, the flight is against a person's will. That is how the enemy works against people's will, using spells, to include love spells. That's why sometimes it may look like two people are in love, like outwardly, but behind closed doors, they're fighting because there's no peace. Everything's been done for appearances. And likewise, a spell is about appearances to make good look evil or evil look good. So again, behold, I'm against your pillows, wherewith ye there hunt the souls to make them fly, and I'll tear them from your arms, and will let the souls go, even the souls that ye hunt to make them fly. Your kerchiefs also will I tear, and deliver my people out of your hand, and they shall be no more in your hand to be hunted, and ye shall know that I am the Lord, because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthened the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. Therefore ye shall see no more vanity, nor divine divinations, for I'll deliver my people out of your hand, and ye shall know that I am the Lord." There's a part of the love spell, quote unquote love spell eventually breaking, the Lord breaking it. But even this, the Lord spoke about those workers of iniquity, causing people to see him in a perverse manner by telling lies on him. So whereas I'm speaking about love spell that perverts a person's point of view, and I've been saying about someone he or she is called to love. Ultimately, this is about how the enemy tries to pervert even God-fearing, God-loving Christians to pervert their point of view of the Lord himself. In Matthew 11, I'll read from verses 7 through 19. John was in prison, and he sent his disciples Mm. This also speaks about how the enemy works on people, especially when they're in dire straits, when there's isolation, during times of trouble. John was one who said that Jesus was Lamb of God, who came to take away the sins of the world. He baptized Jesus. He saw the Holy Spirit 
descend upon him in the form of a dove and rested upon him. He heard the father say, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. He knew that Jesus was the Christ, even when both men were in their mother's womb. John knew. Yet, when his life was on the line, he was in prison. He sent his disciples to ask Jesus, are you the one or should we expect another? Doubt is a weapon of the enemy. Fear and doubt, they're a tag team. And by the way, sometimes the person who speaks those things into your life are those whom you trust. In Matthew 16, at one point, Peter said that Jesus was a Christ. And later on in the chapter, Peter started rebuking Jesus when he spoke about his crucifixion, death, burial, and resurrection. But the Lord rebuked him and said, Get thee behind me, Satan. So the enemy was inspiring Peter. There are people who have not gotten married because of ungodly, bad advice from someone they trust. And sometimes people have gotten married and gotten married to the wrong person because of ungodly advice. Kind of like scripture tells us to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. We have to ensure that anyone who gives us counsel is giving us godly counsel. In 1 Kings 22, Ahab had counsel from his 400 prophets, but the counsel was going to lead to his death. One prophet, Micaiah, whom they later called for, came and told him that he went to Ramoth Gilead, that he would die. So Ahab had a choice, but he still went with his false prophets, and it cost him his life. Counsel matters. In 1 Kings 12, King Roboam, when the Israelites came to him, asking to relieve the burdens that King Solomon, his father, had placed upon them, the older counselors told him to listen to them. But then he went to seek his compatriots, younger men. And they told him basically to increase his standards, to show that his finger is thicker than his father's waist. A prideful answer. It resulted in the split of the nation of Israel, the ten northern tribes Israel, and then Judah. So counsel matters. Counsel also helps us see things. But sometimes a counselor or a counselor is the one whom we trust and it ends up being bad counsel. Second Samuel 13. Jonadab was Amnon's cousin. Amnon took his counsel regarding how to quote unquote get Tamar. It costs Amnon his life. Who you take counsel from matters. So ensure that whosoever is giving you counsel is giving you godly counsel. And seek the Lord, no matter who gives you counsel, seek the Lord for him to confirm it. That what was said is of him, of his spirit for you. So again, John, in prison, dire straits, sent his disciples to ask the Lord, are you the one or should we expect another? So pick on verse 7. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes, Concerning John, what went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in kings' houses. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. I pause. John had a rugged appearance. He ate um, locusts and wild honey. That was his diet. But then he had the, the clean-cut Pharisees and Sadducees. Now on the surface, the Pharisees and Sadducees may have looked closer to God than John. Looks can be deceiving. That's why we need the Spirit of God to guide us into all truth. So imagine someone who has to make a choice or seemingly has to make a choice between like two individuals and rather than relying on faith by the word of God, they're relying on sight. And it's like on paper, one person looks so much better than the other. There's also this thing, for example, a lot of women have a fascination with men who are over six feet tall and they may get a man who's over six feet tall 
and then a man maybe has diabetes, has both legs amputated, or is in an accident and is bound to a wheelchair, and a man who's six feet tall is now reduced to a wheelchair and is about 4'11". But the woman couldn't see that stuff coming. And the Lord may have had a man for the woman. Who's not six feet? Maybe 5'11". Maybe 5'7". But even a five foot woman at times may be like she wants a man who's over six feet tall. Not knowing how things are going to come out. And a man may be like he wants a woman who looks a certain way. Oh, very beautiful. The next thing you know, she has an accident. Her face smashes against the windshield. Doesn't look the same. Or she has some kind of skin cancer. Things happen. He may want a woman who is quote unquote voluptuous, with a large breast. Next thing you know, she has cancer of both breasts and has a double mastectomy. Things change. But people can't see these things coming. So the end will try to point people in a certain direction, but they can't see it coming. So with John, he looked further away from the Lord than the Pharisees and the scribes. But just going off looks, people would be wrong. Because there are people who can tell you, oh, the Pharisees and the scribes, they, were, they have everything together. Oh, John, don't listen to him. And on the surface, it may look as if that is the case. But it's one thing what people say. The most important opinion is what God says. What does God say about a person? This is what Jesus, this is what God said about John. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. Verily I say unto you, Among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Imagine that. Despite his rough, rugged appearance, this is what Jesus had to say about John. Sometimes part of the love spell is people are listening to the lies others are telling. And they may not know they're lying. They may just be going on what they can see. And they're not consulting with the Spirit of the Lord. So again, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. And the violent take it by force. Which is also how some people end up in a relationship. By force. For all the prophets and law prophesied until John. And if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. He that has ear to ear, let him hear. Whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in markets and calling unto their fellows, and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned unto you, and ye have not lamented. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He hath a devil. See, these are lies of the enemy that can put a people put a person or people under a spell to love who they should hate and to hate whom they should love. The Son of Man came eating and drinking and they say, Behold, a man gluttonous and a wine-bibber, a friend of publican, publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified of her children. Some people find out the hard way because while the enemy is trying to use his lies, his sorcerers or else. The Lord is speaking to people and sometimes they ignore the Lord and they listen to the voice of the enemy instead and they learn some hard and some harsh lessons as a result. But again, even though I have been using this message, speaking heavily about romantic relationships, ultimately this is about our relationship with Christ. Because there are many people they will want nothing to do with Lord Jesus Christ because of the enemy's actions. When the spell is broken, for them, it will be too late. 
An example is in Matthew 28, verses 1 through 15. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and other Mary to see the sepulcher. And, behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him the keepers did shake and become as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And, behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall, there shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. So here it is, the angel of the Lord conveying these things to Mary Magdalene and some other women. The angel of the Lord, which meant he was telling the truth. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy, and it run to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid, go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. Now, when they were going, behold, some of the watch came to the city and shewed unto the chief priest all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while he slept. The angel of the Lord said that Jesus was risen. But the chief priest, the elders, They paid people to say, say that his disciples took his body. Because what some people found out, the person who was a messenger of Satan was a professing brother or sister in Christ. Sometimes a person was truly a brother or sister in Christ. Again, kind of like Peter, when he spoke, but what he was saying was of the devil. Or even James and John want to call, want to call on fire up in a Samaritan village that had rejected Jesus. The Lord rebuked them, let them know they didn't know which spirit they were of. So sometimes good people do evil things unknowingly. But some messengers of Satan, they know what they're doing, they know who they're serving. They're undercover, pretending to be a brother or sister in Christ. And some people have gone through a relationship with the wrong person because a professing brother or sister in Christ, either knowingly or unknowingly, willingly or unwillingly, misled them into that relationship to include a marriage. And they continued, And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him. Love spell, the power of persuasion, and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. I remember I was, on, I was in Kuwait and the Lord had just started using me to write books. And I used to have cups of books with me. And I was riding on a bus and across the aisle from me was a rabbi. And I offered him a book. And he looked at me and he asked if the book was about Jesus. He didn't want a book that was about Jesus. They're Jews today. They want nothing to do with Jesus. They're waiting for a Messiah who will be the Antichrist. Because of the words of these people, there are many Jews today, and others, other people, but there are many Jews today. They've been blinded by a spell, if you will, unable to see Jesus as a Messiah, despite the things in scriptures, 
despite the many prophecies that he fulfilled in his first coming. And because they have rejected the real, they're going to accept the fake. But a time will come when they'll realize that the one they've been waiting for has already come. So a love spell is meant to blind a person to the one he or she is called to love. And also to bind a person to someone who is not in accordance with God's will. Or if the person is in accordance with God's will, it's not in accordance with God's timing or his way. But ultimately, the biggest love spell is to turn people away from Lord Jesus Christ and to look for someone whom Satan will send. So let's speak about love spell. There are love spells regarding romantic relationships. But the same process, the same philosophy, applies to, the, to accepting or rejecting Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the living God. But eventually, the spell will be broken and the truth will prevail. May the Holy Spirit of the living God point you to the truth and of course ultimately the Lord Jesus Christ, the one whom I love and serve.